Wow, beautiful. Solid. We are somebody. We are somebody. We are somebody. Oh my God, it's so I'm so glad to be with you again and to be here with my colleagues, uh, beautiful Sarah, Saru, Alan, obviously, PDA, you guys are doing this thing and I just wanna thank you for this. So I know each of us are gonna kinda give a few remarks and I hope that we can get a chance to get into a, a discussion. So I want to just center the black liberation struggle, if I might, if I may, and I want you to walk with me through this. So last week, I was with the Black Caucus of the Teamsters and just really reminded of the connection between the civil rights movement and the labor movement itself. But sisters and brothers and family and friends, you guys know I work very hard to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help me God. Now, sometimes people don't want to hear the truth, so we're going to say ouch or we're going to say amen. Now, we know that black folks haven't always been welcomed in the labor movement. We can say ouch or we can say amen. That is the truth. That's the truth. And anti-blackness still persists in every space to this day because it is called the United States of America. Now, if we are courageous enough to accept what I just said, we can overcome it. But if people want to pretend like this country has never been anti-black. We got a problem. And I've heard too many elected officials, even some of them on the Democratic side, writing a whole different history. Instead of saying that, yes, that is the history of the United States of America, unfortunately, it is still happening in the present, but what we are going to do collectively is work to turn this thing around moving forward into the future. But it makes no sense to lie about the history. All the time, my brother. But bigotry and exclusion is the antithesis of solidarity. So we got to recognize that. It is the antithesis of solidarity. And we need more folks to not play games with this. Now, I think I said in the presence of folks here that, you know, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and also Minister Malcolm X really did critique the essence of what it means to be a white liberal in America. Now, you're going to say amen or you're going to say ouch. I know this is hard. Amen. That white liberals play games with identity. And they use it as a blunt force object really to divide us and not to edify and to lift us. They use it performatively. And I'm offended by it. Now, Republicans and neo-fascists, they just use it to kill off things. Affirmative action. Hello, somebody. Now, affirmative action was put in place to make some crooked paths straight. But unfortunately, we have some folks, mainly on the Republican side, but not exclusively on the Republican side, who want to pretend that chattel slavery in the United States of America did not happen, that the stealing of the indigenous people's land did not happen, and that all of a sudden the grievances of black folks in this country who are descendants of enslaved people do not matter, that we're just making this stuff up. So now the labor union is not different from the United States of America. We got to tell the truth. Now, do we have opportunities within the House of Labor to do better, to really be truly in solidarity one with another? Absolutely. And I believe that the best place to do it is within the House of Labor. So let me uh, quickly skip through, and I just want to go. So inseparable from the goals projected by the historic 1963 March on Washington for jobs and freedom. They leave that out. That, that, this was a labor mar march. The March on Washington was a labor march as much as it was a civil rights march, but they leave that part out. A freedom budget for all Americans was advanced in 1966. I don't know if Dr. Harvey K is in this room, but in 1966 by none other than Asa Philip Randolph, Bayard Rustin, and Martin Luther King Jr. 
central leaders of the activist wing of the civil rights movement in the 1950s and 1960s, it promised the full and final triumph of the civil rights movement. It aimed to eradicate poverty in 10 years. So I want to pause right there, and I want you to wrap your mind around the progressive agenda in the 21st century. King Solomon from the Christian Bible once said, there is nothing new under the sun. So what we are collectively fighting for today in 2024 was fought for in the 60s. Asa Philip Randolph had this vision that in the hegemonic nation known as the United States of America, that we ought to be able to eradicate poverty in 10 years. He drew his inspiration from President FDR's four freedoms. The number one freedom is the freedom from want. And if the House of Labor has to stand in the gap for all workers in the United States of America, not just those who have the benefit of the union, because most of our sisters and brothers and family and friends do not have the benefit of the union, and that is why they need union leaders like the ones who are up here now who say we will not leave a sister or a brother behind. Freedom budget. For all Americans is what Asa Philip Randolph was fighting for, but he understood that the core of America was an anti-blackness, that he could not have a vision just for black Americans and leave everybody else out, because in the United States of America, they don't want to do anything just for black Americans' reparations. Can I get a hello somebody? So I need... Time keeper, what I got, two more, three more, you putting up the sign, I'm watching them. What I need, my sisters and brothers in the House of Labor, and my sisters and brothers who are on the progressive side, and I'm really talking to my vanilla sisters and brothers, as Dr. West would say, is to understand that anti-blackness is real. And that black liberation is the liberation for everybody else. Hello? It's everybody's liberated. When black people are liberated, don't let them lie to you and separate us. Every great social, economic, and political gain in this country has came by way of black liberation. We together. We rise or fall together. Don't let them separate us. We are together. So whether you are white and working class, Hispanic and working class, black and working class, Asian and working class, otherly abled and working class, we are together. So we need to fight for a 21st century freedom budget for all Americans in these United States of America.